When we think about emotional intelligence, both in theory and practice, it's a very important concept that in many cases differentiates uh, those who do exceptionally well and those students and engineers who exceed very well in their organizations. Uh, part of it is you've thought just a little bit about emotional intelligence versus regular intelligence, but let's do a couple of definitions from the literature. Uh, Robert Cooper in his book, Executive e EQ, uh, talks about the ability to sense, understand, and apply the power and acumen of emotions as a source of energy, information, connections, and influence. Essentially, he's saying that, em that emotions and emotional intelligence is the source of most of the powerful things that drive us. A little bit more, uh, Daniel Goleman, who wrote uh, the book uh, Emotional Intelligence, really tried to capture a lot of it. He says, can we recognize our own feelings and those of others? Can we motivate ourselves? Can we manage emotions well in ourselves and others? That's his definition of emotional intelligence. And then the probably the most uh, famous researchers in this group, um, Mayer and Salovey, talk about the ability to perceive accurately, appraise, and express emotion. Can we use it to access or generate feelings when they facilitate thought? versus inhibit thought, and then can we regulate our emotions to promote uh, emotional and intellectual growth. So if we take these definitions, and I come back and we say, what is this and how would we use it? When we think about emotional intelligence versus grade point average, and looking at uh, an EI scale versus SAT scores, the EI scale, a little 33 item scale, was predicted first year GPA significantly better than our SAT scores. Now, some would say, how could that be? Because we select students best based on AC, SAT scores. And, and when you think about it, what we've done is we've taken all of the low, middle to low SAT scores and, and removed them from the sample. So now we have a very narrow slice of SAT scores at the high end. And so it's not uncommon that those might not predict as well as an emotional intelligence scale because we didn't select students based on those scales. Um, but as we think about it, uh, even at a place like Bell Labs, uh, uh, Kelly and Kaplan on uh, Kelly's book on how to be a star at work says that it's the emotional intelligence that differentiates those top 5% of the f performers versus the middle 50%. Another study of uh, managers and executives says that about 80 to 90% of the competencies that differentiate high outstanding performers or outstanding managers are related to emotional intelligence. And then the ones that I like to show to my colleagues here at the university, it says even a set of Berkeley PhDs that emotional intelligence capabilities were four times more likely than IQ in determining professional success as research scientists. So how, you, how well you work with colleagues, what other things you do has a big impact. Now, IQ is important because you didn't get into Berkeley without a reasonable IQ, but then the emotional intelligence skills, skills make the, the difference in your performance. Children perform better. Uh, there's a host of studies that say that emotional intelligence skills are as important in many cases as the, the intellectual ability. Now, when we come back here, there's four areas of emotional intelligence. This comes out of Goleman's work. Um, but he says you've got to have self-awareness. If you're not aware of yourself, then it's unlikely that you're going to be able to manage your emotions. If you're not aware of your emotions, it's unlikely that you're going to have social awareness and be aware of anybody else's. And without both of those things, then having good relationships is really, really difficult. So we're going to talk a little bit more about each of those. So the self-awareness is, do you, <clears throat> are you aware of your impact on other people? Do you have an accurate self-assessment? And then do you have some sense of self-confidence to, to, to be able to say, how do we think about ourselves and understand ourselves? And then if we want to manage ourselves, it comes to say, can I, do I have self-control? Uh, do I have conscientiousness? Am I reliable? Do I have these kinds of, of desires to achieve and to, and to manage myself? Uh, the little example of students with marshmallows and whether or not they could delay their gratification. I say we run those experiments with university students every Friday and Saturday night to say, where are they? Are they in town having a good time? Or are they in the library studying? And that has to do with their ability to manage themselves and to, lay, to delay their gratification. The social awareness, to me, it all boils down to empathy. 
and that is you have the ability to put yourself in somebody else's situation. Can you see the world from their perspective? If you have that ability to empathize, then it's likely that you'll have a better service orientation, you'll have better organizational awareness, and you're more likely that you're going to be able to look at somebody else and say, how do they develop and how would they develop from their perspective? And then as we look at this relationship management, there's a host of factors here, and often we start on those relationship management. We talk about leadership, influence, change management, team capabilities, but those all build on the other skills. And if you don't have those other skills to be able to do these really well is very, very difficult. So that's just a little bit of an essence of, of the definition of, of emotional intelligence. The issue here is that emotions are real, they're valuable. It's not just that they get in our way and inhibit us, but they're value. They provide information, they provide energy, and they assist in our growth. Therefore, if you have a high level of emotional intelligence, it gives you an advantage. And part of our task is to be able to say, how do we use those skills to give us a competitive advantage to be able to help us perform more effectively, to be better engineers, to be more innovative, to be more creative, to do all the things that we're setting out to do.